an American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima. It is an atomic bomb. It is a harnessing of the basic power of the universe. This is the real sound of an atomic bomb. With the premiere of the movie Oppenheimer, the topic of nuclear weapons is on our minds. Besides the visual that our minds immediately go to, huge mushroom clouds suspended in the air, there's a question we have to ask. How does a nuclear bomb sound? And how do filmmakers and video game designers represent it in their creations? Let's see how it has been handled up till now. Storytellers, filmmakers, sound designers and producers use hyper-realism as their tool. The goal is to evoke an emotional response from the audience that captures the essence of the event, even it may not precisely replicate the actual reality. In my work with podcasts, you know, I manipulate the dialogues and work on pacing and sound to fit the vision for each show getting rid of mistakes, using re-records, effects, and so on. And Christopher Nolan's film Oppenheimer wasn't the first time a nuclear bomb was portrayed on the screen. Indiana Jones 4, Armageddon, or games like Modern Warfare, or Fallout, all did it before. So let's explore how accurate these representations are compared to the real-life sound of the bomb. But what are the basic principles of nuclear bomb explosions and the resulting sound? The initial boom is more like a shotgun blast than a thunderclap. This is followed by a sustained roar that can last for several minutes. The sound is so loud, it can cause hearing damage, even from a great distance. Survivors of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki have described the sound of the explosions as being like a thousand freight trains or a thousand thunderclaps. The sound of a nuclear bomb explosion is created by the shockwave, a rapidly expanding area of high pressure. The shockwave can cause the air to vibrate, which we perceive as sound, the vibrations. The intensity of the sound depends on the size of the explosion and the sound of a nuclear bomb can be heard for miles around. Now in space, there is no air to transmit sound waves, so atomic explosions do not make any sound there. But talking about it is one thing, but listening to the real thing is another. Check out the footage from a real nuclear test. Firstly, let's remember that light travels faster than sound, so that's why the blast is delayed. You can hear a blast followed by a shockwave. If it doesn't sound as cool as, you know, resonant uh, in the movies, remember that these were recorded decades ago with old microphones from massive distances. It's difficult to compare it to anything. We can only imagine how scary it would be to hear it in real life. Now, let's hear a movie representation of the bomb. In Indiana Jones 4, the initial bang sounds quite similar to the real sound. The Wolverine is much more cinematic with quiet muffled sound upon bomb drop. and then increasing sound of oncoming blast wave to make the scene intense. In Independence Day, the science fiction one with a swoosh sound of a bomb in space, of course, as we you know, said before, there is no sound in space.
And Armageddon is another cool pre with a nuclear explosion in space with futuristic explosion sounds. It's important to mention that Nolan featured a nuclear explosion in a movie before. It was in The Dark Knight Rises. The explosion is immediate upon impact with the surface and we hear a muffled sound of a blast wave. I went to the premiere of Oppenheimer yesterday, curious how Nolan will portray the bomb in the film. Spoiler alert, the small test explosions were on point with the sound, and the delay in sound speed. The main event, the Trinity test, was artistically stylized and shown from the perspective of Oppenheimer. So, in my professional opinion, less scientific and more cinematic. But then, it does make an impact, and the tension leading to it? unbearable. So go and see the movie, it's the best. So these were a few popular movies, but what about the games where we can experience the blast of an atomic bomb as players? In Far Cry 5 we hear a short blunt bang upon explosion, a little bit like a real thing. Wrath of God upon the earth. Modern Warfare, a loud bang upon hit, again, not real as the sound would be late, but that wouldn't look as cool. Fold 4, the loud bang upon hit as it was a grenade, so not as impactful in my view. We love you too. And in Fallout 3, there is a distant boom followed by shattered windows. Battlefield 3, another classic, loud bang. And Metro Last Light. There is no blast, just the sound of the afterwave and surrounding sounds. What happened? What the hell was that? Speed! What's going on? I can't get anything! Oh my god! Shit! Shit! Keep me out! What's going on here? Come on! Come on! Stop! So, what is better? Is the real thing or the hyper-realistic representation? Well, first, you know, let's agree that Nova is good as it's a nuclear bomb explosion, and nor do I condone detonating them for a sound recording, you know, I don't want to be cancelled by anyone. But while real-life sound provides a visceral and immediate experience, media representations can shape and enhance our perception, because filmmakers and game designers often aim to convey the magnitude and devastation through sound design, visual aspects and storytelling techniques. The obvious is the light and sound hitting the viewer simultaneously, which in real life wouldn't be the case. But, you know, if recreated in a video game, it would lose the impact. The important thing is to remember that movies and games are not the real thing, right? Even though a lot of us base our knowledge on them. Accurate or not, I prefer hearing the nuclear weapon sound on the screen than I would in real life. 